my fellow kids of Kid Time Storytime. We are here to present a real life story that happened between our countries, Britain and the United States. A real event that one day helped us bridge the gap between our nations during a terrible time. Yes, in ancient history. No, no, it wasn't ancient history. In a long, long, long hundreds of years ago time. No, no, it was just the 1930s. Oh, so how many years is that when we're from 2030? Okay, this is a history story, not, not, not math. But anyway, it's an important story that happened for real between Britain and the United States of America. That's right, because sometimes the best stories are the real ones. What she said. All right, hot dog. Eleanor Roosevelt throws a picnic. And as you heard, it is real. And that was the real dog that belonged to Eleanor Roosevelt and her husband, FDR. But you're going to read all about that. Here we go. Hot diggy dog. Eleanor Roosevelt really liked hot dogs. She liked to eat them and she liked to cook them up on the grill. Hey, me too. In her family, she was famous for her hot dog roasts. But when her husband, Franklin, was elected President of the United States, there wasn't much time left for hot dog roasts. Times were tough in the U.S. in the 1930s. Many people were without jobs or even a place to live. The president was working hard to make things better. Since he couldn't walk or move about easily, he counted on Eleanor to travel around the country for him. Here she is inspecting a work site. As a young girl, Eleanor had been very shy. She never wanted to be first lady, but she worked hard and she got better and better at speaking in public. Oh, that's good to know, right? Practice, you can get over your shyness. She'd always been good at listening and soon Eleanor was as popular as the president. Here's what people are saying in Ohio, she'd tell Franklin when she returned to the White House. And these are the problems in Idaho, she'd say. And don't forget those poor Californians, she'd remind him. Eleanor never seemed to run out of energy, which is great when you're helping to run a whole big country like the USA. There were big problems in the rest of the world too. The leader of Germany, Adolf Hitler, was threatening the countries around him. It looked as if a huge war might be coming. Eleanor hated war, but this one was going to be hard to avoid. And you notice she's listening to the news on the radio. No television yet. Being first lady meant your house, the White House, was always full of people. Sometimes important people visited Washington, D.C., and a dinner was held in their honor. That still goes on today, you know. The dinners were usually fancy and always hot dog less, complained Eleanor. And there they are at this big fancy dinner party with all the fine china and the flowers and the ladies and pearls and the candelabras and the roast but look at that she's dreaming of a hot dog then in 1939 the king and queen of england announced they were coming 150 years had passed since the United States had won its independence from Great Britain. No British king or queen had ever set foot on American soil since. It was about time. How about that? After the American Revolution, no king or queen came to the U.S. for 150 years, and now they love to come and visit us. Now, back then, it was very different, and this was going to be the first time. Eleanor asked her husband, Did you know that Queen Elizabeth is a distant cousin of George Washington? Why, she's practically a member of the American family. So, to celebrate the ro first royal visit, Eleanor continued, we need an all-American picnic. And what is a picnic? Eleanor probably asked herself. Without hot dogs? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Get the hot dogs. Get your grill in. After the usual fancy dinner at the White House, Eleanor decided she and Franklin and the King and Queen would travel up to Hyde Park, New York, where the Roosevelt family had a big estate. Eleanor and Franklin loved spending time there. I've been there. It looks just like this, and it's beautiful, and you can take a hike through the woods up to it. 
It's a little house. It's really lovely. The main house was too big and formal for a picnic. Instead, the picnic would be held at Top Cottage, a simple stone house the president owned on top of a nearby hill. From the porch, guests could see the Hudson River weaving through the valley below and the gentle Catskill and Shawangunk Mountains. I don't know if I said that right. Shawangunk Mountains rising into the sky and beautiful countryside in every direction. There was no prettier place for leaving the cares of the world behind. Nothing like being out in nature. Now, Eleanor planned the menu carefully. Smoked turkey, baked ham, cranberry jelly, brown bread, baked beans, green salad, and strawberry shortcake made with local strawberries. And of course, hot dogs. Fine, Franklin agreed. Anything but spinach. I'm the president and I shouldn't have to eat spinach if I don't want to. All right. I can, I can get behind that. I'll have your spinach, sir, because I love it. Not everyone was pleased with the menu, though. Thousands of letters poured into the White House, if you can believe that, from New York and Michigan, from South Carolina to Kansas and all the other states, and all about the hot dogs. Everyone knows that a hot dog is most ind indigestible, read one. For mercy's sake, no hot dogs for Europe to laugh about, begged another. Must you feed the queen hot dogs? asked a third. It is not exactly a ladies' fair, and I think we all agree that the queen is a lady. Wow, people have such strong hot dog opinions. <gasps> well, being first lady and speaking on the president's behalf had taught Eleanor how to stick up for herself. In her daily newspaper column, that's right, she wrote, she wrote a daily newspaper column on top of all her other first lady duties and the traveling she did for the president. In her daily column, she wrote, Oh dear, oh dear, so many people are worried that the dignity of our country will be imperiled by inviting royalty to a picnic, particularly a hot dog picnic. Let me assure you, dear readers, that there will be plenty of other food and the more important guest will be served with due formality. And so, on June 11th, 1939, Eleanor woke up, did her morning sit-ups, because that's the kind of lady she was ahead of her time, exercising, having a job, having another job. She did her morning sit-ups, she went to church, then she dashed up to Top Cottage to get things ready for King George, Queen Elizabeth, President Roosevelt, and about 200 of their closest friends and neighbors. Here's her little to-do list, stretchy. Morning stretches, oh, that's such a good idea. You might wanna try that, kid. Makes you feel good and ready to attack the day. The king and queen pulled up in a car driven by the president himself. Welcome, Eleanor greeted them. How was your ride? She could guess the answer. Franklin had a special car that he worked with hand controls. He loved driving it. The faster, the better. As Eleanor suspected on this sunny afternoon, he'd been showing off, racing their majesties up bumpy roads through the woods and around steep, twisty turns to the picnic site. What a wild trip. You can kind of see it on the king and queen's faces. They got jostled around in that back seat quite a bit. Not him, though. He's happy as a clam. There's their dog. I believe the dog's name is Fala. As in, fa la 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 The picnic began at one o'clock. Eleanor moved between the tables on the porch and those on the lawn, chatting with her guests and tasting everything from turkey fit for a king and queen to berries so juicy they practically exploded with sweetness. During the feast, Native Americans performed traditional dances, music, and folk tales. It's safe to say that it was the first time their majesties had ever heard the Navajo Potato Song. That's a pretty safe bet. And I saw pictures of this actual historical event and it looked much like this. And all the tables laid out, people watching. Eleanor's famous hot dogs were a first too arranged just so on a fancy silver tray. The royal couple had never tried such food. King George picked one up with his fingers and ate it with gusto and mustard. He even came back for seconds, but the queen was puzzled. She asked, how do you eat this? Very simple, replied President Roosevelt. Push it into your mouth and keep pushing it in until it's all gone. 
Was that a proper way for a queen to eat? Of course not. She cut the hot dog into little pieces and ate it daintily with her fork. Well, either way, she did eat it. The royal visitors had to leave that evening to begin the long trip back to England. The sun was setting as the townspeople gathered at the train station and up and down the banks of the Hudson River. There you can see it in the back. The sang, they sang off King George and Queen Elizabeth with an old Scottish tune. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind. The warm, gracious king and queen who had visited their little town would not soon be forgotten. As music filled the air and the train chucked slowly down the tracks, Eleanor waved to her new friends. Franklin called out one last time, Good luck to you! All the luck in the world! Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And they left on a train. She had flowers in her hand. Three months later, German tanks rolled into the country of Poland. World War II had begun. England, and later the U.S., would see many years of fighting before peace came again. The Roosevelts, right here, and the royal couple were never far from each other's thoughts as their two countries battled side by side against their enemies. President Roosevelt had promised to visit King George and Queen Elizabeth at their castle in England. It never happened. The president died before the war was over. Eleanor would later take the trip alone. June 11th, 1989 was another perfect picnic day. 50 years had passed and an anniversary picnic was being held at Hyde Park. The children who'd been guests at the 1939 picnic were much older now and some of them returned to eat and share memories Queen Elizabeth sent a special message because I believe she was too old to travel at that point. And she wrote, The memory of the picnic was a source of strength and comfort to the king and me through the dark days of the Second World War, which followed so soon after our visit. Look at that. Can you imagine being at that picnic in 1939 and being back in 1989 to commemorate that moment? And what do you think was on that anniversary picnic menu? Why, it was exactly the same, right down to the hot diggity dogs. Served on a silver platter, of course. And here are some fascinating closing notes. The 1939 royal visit and the picnic at Hyde Park are true events. Though, of course, different people remember details differently. That's just like in your life. I bet if you go into a picnic or a party, everybody would have a different memory of it. Now, the research library at Hyde Park holds the letters that people wrote to Mrs. Roosevelt about her menu, and the king and queen reacted to the hot dogs just as written. And it goes on to talk about how remarkable the president, Franklin Roosevelt, was, how he became president in 1933 during the Great Depression when so many Americans were out of work, and then he continued as president during World War II, seeing the country most of the way to victory, but he died in office just before the end of the war. What made his accomplishments even more extraordinary, in case you didn't know this, why Eleanor traveled for the president so much, was that the president was stricken with polio as a young man and was mostly confined to a wheelchair. He was also the only president to be elected four times in a row. Later on, a law was passed limiting future presidents to just two terms. That's a total of eight years. And now it talks a little bit about our First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, who was equally remarkable. So since, so since Franklin couldn't move about easily, she traveled and became his eyes and ears and spoke up for children, for workers, for women, for minorities, for anyone she felt needed a helping hand. And after he died, she became the first U.S. ambassador to the brand new United Nations and became known as the First Lady of the World. Does it say anything else about the queen and the king? Why, yes, it does. It says that King George the Sixth and Queen Elizabeth, yes, yes, also led their country through some very difficult years, setting a courageous and gracious example for the British people. The friendship 
that developed between the two countries helped lay the groundwork for the close cooperation of their countries during the long war years and a friendship with the United States that continues to this day. That's beautiful. And that's why America and Britain are friends to this day. That's right. Because your friends are with you during the hard times. Yes, and your friends will also feed you hot dogs. That's right. Well, kid, I hope you enjoyed this historical kid time story time. Yes, yes, I hope you learned as much as we did. It was a beautiful story, wasn't it? Yeah, but I'm, you know, I'm kind of hungry for a hot dog now. You know, I know a place. Oh, lead the way. See you next time, kid, on Kid Time Story Time.